The stunning display of SpaceX's Dragon landing is a stunning testament to human ingenuity and advanced aerospace technology. SpaceX's Dragon is currently the pinnacle of spacecraft design. However, we must consider the dire implications if its parachutes were to malfunction, resulting in a catastrophic plunge into the ocean at a staggering 300 miles per hour. Such an impact would tear the craft apart, likely killing all astronauts on board and producing a massive shockwave across the ocean surface. Fortunately, the potential for disaster has been mitigated as Elon Musk reintroduced the concept of a propulsive landing for the Dragon spacecraft, an idea that had been shelved about a decade ago. What exactly is this technique, and is it truly capable of replacing parachute landings entirely? Let's dive deeper on today's episode of NR Studio. Parachutes have historically served as a reliable mechanism for spacecraft landings, facilitating a managed and safe descent from high speeds. They have demonstrated their efficacy on missions ranging from the Apollo program to the contemporary Dragon capsule. However, despite their reliability, parachutes are not without significant limitations. They exhibit fragility, require complex deployment frameworks, and can fail in demanding environments. History has witnessed numerous examples where parachute malfunctions have resulted in catastrophic landing failures. For example, during the Soyuz 1 mission in 1967, the spacecraft suffered a catastrophic failure when both the primary and backup parachutes failed to deploy during re-entry. This culminated in a devastating incident that resulted in the death of cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov, thus highlighting significant deficiencies in parachute design and quality assurance in the aerospace sector. In 200, NASA's Genesis probe was on its way back to Earth carrying valuable solar wind samples when, unfortunately, its parachute malfunctioned and failed to deploy. Instead of making a controlled descent, it plunged into the Utah desert at high speed. The design flaw in the parachute system threatened to ruin years of research. However, fortunate circumstances allowed scientists to salvage critical data despite the devastating incident. In recent years, as commercial spaceflight has boomed, the imperative for landing safety has increased significantly. SpaceX has been at the forefront of this effort, diligently improving the parachute system for its Dragon spacecraft. However, that doesn't mean they haven't had issues with these erratic parachutes. For example, SpaceX experienced challenges during Crew Dragon parachute assessments conducted in 2019 and 2020. While these failures occurred during testing and did not pose any threat to life, they underscored the need for contingency plans in case of emergencies. This rationale underpins SpaceX's bold initiative to enhance the capabilities of its Dragon spacecraft by allowing it to land using its own propulsion system, which serves as a contingency measure in the event of a parachute failure. This is more than just a concept. It's a validated methodology. Both the Falcon 9 and Starship use powerful rocket engines exclusively to achieve precision landings, effectively eliminating the need for parachutes. It's worth noting that SpaceX originally revealed this upgrade back in 2019. They announced at X that the Dragon 2's incorporation of eight Super Draco engines would allow the vehicle to achieve helicopter-like landing precision in any location. Indeed, the image they shared prominently featured a pair of Super Draco engines. These powerful thrusters were originally engineered for Crew Dragon's launch escape system, LES, which was intended to propel the spacecraft quickly away from the rocket in the event of an emergency during launch. Each Super Draco produces about 16,000 pounds of thrust, and SpaceX has equipped the Dragon spacecraft with eight of these engines, strategically arranged in pairs at four different locations around the vehicle, housed within Super Draco pods. Generating a combined thrust of 128,000 pound force, the four Super Draco pods are capable of propelling the Dragon spacecraft at accelerations ranging from 6 to 10 G in a matter of seconds, enough to ensure a quick escape from a dangerous situation. These thrusters aren't just theoretical constructs. They have demonstrated their efficacy in practical testing. In May 2015, during the Padabort test, the Super Draco propulsion system performed flawlessly, propelling a Crew Dragon prototype to an altitude of 1,500 meters in just six seconds, before its parachutes deployed safely. In January 2020, during an in-flight abort test, the pod once again fulfilled its vital function, propelling the Dragon spacecraft away from a malfunctioning Falcon 9 mid-flight in a high-stakes demonstration of its life-saving potential. 
From the beginning, SpaceX has harbored big aspirations for the Crew Dragon's landing system. Because of its proven reliability and stability, the company initially conceptualized the spacecraft to perform a vertical landing on solid terrain similar to the Falcon 9 rocket. The concept was simple. Upon re-entry, the Dragon would fire its eight Super Draco engines, decelerate, and eventually achieve a smooth landing on a predetermined pad. This methodology went beyond mere safety considerations. It fundamentally prioritized speed. If successful, it would likely significantly reduce repair times, allowing the Dragon to be prepared and positioned on the launch pad faster than ever before. However, in 2017, the initiative was ultimately shelved due to NASA's requirement for a parachute-assisted landing and the inherent technical difficulties, including the need for additional landing legs. Most importantly, SpaceX placed the utmost emphasis on astronaut safety, which ultimately led to the decision to abandon the concept. However, it was only in recent years that the concept resurfaced. At a press conference held for the Crew-9 mission in September 2020, Steve Stick, NASA's Commercial Crew Program Program Manager, confirmed that we have a special capability that has not been seen before for Crew-8 and Crew-9. This capability serves as an emergency capability to manage wear and tear from landing. In the event of a total failure of the primary parachute, the Super Draco thrusters would activate just before the spacecraft hits the water. As a result, an emergency configuration is required that is intended to protect the crew during a very bad situation. Outlining the newly introduced emergency landing feature, William Gerstenmeier, Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability at SpaceX said, We've successfully deployed this on several previous Dragon missions. This marks the first flight of the system on a NASA mission. He further explained that its function is designed to activate in the event of a total failure of all parachutes. This effectively activates the thrusters at the last moment, giving the crew a chance to land safely and evacuate the spacecraft. It is not used in any partial conditions. This statement clearly indicates that Dragon is capable of a safe landing with a single parachute or minor deployment issues. As a result, a booster-powered emergency landing is relegated to a last resort intended only for the most dire scenarios where all parachutes are ineffective. Let's put the landing narrative aside for now. I have something more interesting to share. At the time of the initial announcement of Dragon 2, which showcased the incredible Super Draco-powered landing capability, SpaceX harbored an even bolder vision, a dragon landing on Mars. Indeed, there is a strategy known as the Red Dragon, which from a technical perspective is quite rational. Mars has a thin atmosphere, much denser than Earth, which makes parachutes much less effective at slowing down a spacecraft. For the Red Dragon, this does not pose any challenges. The concept involves using its integrated thrusters to slow down and make a soft landing on a stable surface. Essentially, a propulsive landing is similar to the testing that SpaceX has been doing at their facility in McGregor, Texas. The mission was set to launch using an improved variant of the Falcon rocket, which marked a significant advance in the field of interplanetary exploration. However, in 2017, Musk made a significant strategic shift. He stated that the company was abandoning its plans for a propulsive landing using the Dragon spacecraft. As I mentioned earlier, NASA faces significant safety concerns, and getting the system certified to support a crewed mission would be quite a challenge. Musk explained that meeting the safety requirements, especially regarding crew transportation, would require a tremendous effort. However, there are other significant factors that contributed to the transition. By then, Musk had envisioned a much grander ambition, a fully reusable spacecraft engineered for human exploration of Mars. It was dubbed the Big F, the King Rocket, the BFR, was a new iteration of what is now known as Starship. And after NASA's decision to pull funding for its Red Dragon initiative, aimed at a potential Mars sample return mission, SpaceX abandoned the concept altogether. Instead, they redirected their efforts towards advancing Dragon 2 for missions situated in proximity to home, specifically on Earth. This resolution implied that Dragon capsules would persist in their descent to Earth utilizing parachutes rather than the Super Draco thrusters. From a technical perspective, the thrusters remained an essential component and were installed as they served a vital function in the in-flight abort system of the Dragon spacecraft. Nonetheless, executing a propulsive touchdown on solid terrain would have proven exceedingly challenging in the absence of landing legs. With the prospect of propulsive landings no longer viable, 
Dragon's return strategy was compelled to depend exclusively on parachutes, rendering ocean splashes the favored approach owing to their distinct advantages over terrestrial landings. Water inherently offers a considerably gentler landing surface in contrast to solid ground, thereby reducing stress on both the spacecraft and its occupants. Upon re-entry, the surface temperature of spacecraft such as Crew Dragon or comparable vehicles can ascend to extraordinarily high levels, typically fluctuating between 1,600 degrees Celsius and 2,800 degrees Celsius. Consequently, upon landing, it is common to observe that the spacecraft's white protective coating has entirely succumbed to incineration. Descending into the ocean facilitates a far more efficient dissipation of intense heat than landing on solid ground. Another significant benefit lies in the flexibility concerning potential landing sites. Given that the oceans constitute the largest portion of the Earth's surface, water landings facilitate numerous recovery zones, simplifying mission planning and recovery operations. As a result, water landings continue to be one of the most common methods for ensuring the safe return of astronauts to Earth. However, it is important to recognize that water landings are not without their drawbacks. Initially, re-entry and recovery of a spacecraft and its crew to shore is a complex and protracted process. The effort requires the deployment of specialized recovery vessels and equipment to ensure that all components are safely and efficiently retrieved. Furthermore, interaction with seawater has the potential to cause corrosion and damage to many spacecraft components. This requires greater attention to the design process, coupled with comprehensive post-recovery maintenance to mitigate these effects. Furthermore, one must consider the weather. Of course, mission planners carefully monitor meteorological conditions and strive for optimal landing opportunities. However, if an emergency requires a landing in the middle of a storm, the situation can become extremely critical. High winds and rough seas will greatly complicate the recovery operation, making it more dangerous and protracted, thus extending the time frame for a safe crew recovery. Recognizing these constraints, Sierra Space, an aerospace company based in Louisville, Colorado, adopted a unique strategy with its Dream Chaser spacecraft. The vehicle is Sierra Space's innovative solution to the challenges faced in traditional spacecraft recovery. Inspired by NASA's space shuttle, the design facilitates a soft runway landing, ensuring that re-entry forces are kept below 1.5 Gs, resulting in a much smoother experience compared to the sudden impacts associated with splashdowns in seawater. This makes it a versatile and efficient vehicle suitable for a wide range of missions. One of its most significant benefits lies in its ability to quickly recover sensitive cargo, scientific research, delicate instruments, and critical medical supplies can be delivered unharmed and ready for immediate deployment, unlike capsules that undergo turbulent aquatic landings and protracted recovery periods. By leveraging pre-existing runway infrastructure, Dream Chaser optimizes post-mission processes, thereby minimizing costs and increasing accessibility for spaceflight operations. As the sector moves toward increased reusability and efficiency, these innovative spacecraft could significantly impact the trajectory of commercial spaceflight and orbital logistics. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next one, and thank you for your support.